Hello friends, in this episode we are going to add translations to a Ruby on Rails application. Now the approach of adding translations into an application is called internationalization or I18N because there are 18 letters between I and N. And uh, we are going to actually do it on cprails.com. So I'm going to add support for Spanish language and it's going to look more or less like this. So here I go to the root URL and uh, it is English by default. And uh, I have different flags. I can click on the Spanish flag and I will set the application in Spanish. And you see, I also have uh, slash ES in the URL. So I'm setting the language in the URL. And if I navigate to posts or uh, yeah playlists or to tags, uh, uh, we still have this uh, slash ES or slash uh, EN in the URL. So we're going to set the language based on the URL params. And why not uh, on current user, why not in session, why not in cookies? Actually, the Rails uh, guides have a nice answer for this. So um, the local should be transparent as a part of the URL. You will not break people's uh, assumption if you send it to a friend. And they should see the same content as you, in the same language as you. So uh, we are going to try to... Uh, do translations this way, but uh, usually, most often, if an application requires uh, a user to log in to use, a user would uh, set his language on his own. But for the sake of this example, we're going to set the language in the URL. Let's see how we can do it. So, uh, first of all, I will undo all these uh, changes, I don't need them. And uh, let's uh, go back to our application. I will also restart the server. So yeah, here is the normal, untranslated, untouched version of the application. And uh, first of all, I'm going to see uh, what is the default language of the application. I will start the Rails server. Let me make the screen bigger. Rails C. I18n.local. It is EN. Default locale is also EN. And available locales is a list of uh, all uh, languages that we can have. So how can we add translations? First of all, I have this learning page. I have this uh, title and this subtitle. Let's navigate to this uh, page. Let's open landing page. It is uh, inside the static controller. Here it is, the landing page. And I have a title and subtitle. So let's translate them. I uh, have already an en.yml file where I have lots of translations, but I did not add translations for uh, these two lines. So I'm going to add them. Uh, I see I'm in the static controller and landing page action. So in the envml file, I'm going to find a shared controller. Uh, not this one, a controller should be... Oh yeah, it's not shared, it is static. The name of the controller, it's uh, the root. Uh, controllers are in the root after the uh, language namespace. So we have the static controller and I will add the action landing page. Inside the landing page action, I'm going to add a title. I will copy this uh, text. And I will add a subtitle. And in the subtitle, I will copy this text. Let's save the changes. And yeah, now it is empty because, uh, well, it, I've just made empty strings here. So let's find these uh, translations. I will uh, do i18n.t. Uh, static dot landing page dot title. Let's see if it works. Yes, it works, and it will also work if we drop the i in n and just leave t. And it will also work if we just leave dot title. So this is called lazy translation loading because it uh, by default tries to find inside the static controller landing page uh, name. So the first level is static. Second level is landing page and third level that we're looking by is dot title and we can do the same with subtitle uh, let me copy this so here we'll have uh, dot subtitle let's just make it uh, for the sake of example different so here we have title and subtitle and now let's translate this to spanish so we're going to add a new locale uh, es.yml i'm uh, not going to copy everything, I will just copy this. I will say ES, and here we'll have static title. Let's translate the title. Let's do it with Google Translate now. Uh, same with subtitle.
Okay, and uh, let's go back to our application. So what if we want to see the application in the uh, Spanish language? What if we want to see these translations? To do so, we can go to our application controller and set the default locale. So before action, uh, set locale, def set locale, let's make it private, uh, item n dot locale equals es. Let's refresh the page. Uh, we get this translation missing uh, because in our development.rb I set config item and race on missing translations. So uh, I'm going to disable this error for now because uh, I've just added a new translation. I didn't add all the keys for it. And I will restart the server. Okay. Uh, and here. Actually, you see, I see the application in Spanish because uh, uh, in application controller, I set locale equals ES. Again, I will make it EN. And uh, I see the English version of these two strings. So it looks good. But uh, what if you want to let the user uh, select the language? And what if you want to select the language based on the URL? So um, actually, the Rails guides have uh, a nice example of this. Let's find it. So first, here it is, setting the locale from URL param. So first of all, I'm going to add this to the application controller. Default URL options, and we're going to append the locale equals ITN and locale to all our URLs. Let's uh, refresh the page. Let's visit playlist, for example. And you see we have a uh, question mark locale equals en. So we have the uh, current, current locale appended to all the URLs. Uh, let's make it es. I'll refresh, I'll go to another URL, and uh, it should be locale equals es. But it doesn't look good. We don't want to uh, set it in uh, this format, in the query params. I want to have it uh, something like uh, uh, slash en or slash es uh, slash posts. So to do this, I'm going to go uh, back here and we will uh, add scopes to our roots. So the scope is going to be locale. Let's go to our roots. And for now, let's translate uh, just the playlists and tags. And uh, yeah, and landing page. I will also add it here. So scope locale. Uh, yeah, let's say en and uh, es, landing page, playlists, and tags. Let's uh, uh, go back to our application and refresh the page. Um, it doesn't work for posts because we didn't add the post to this scope. But uh, if we go to playlists, we see slash es slash playlists slash es slash tags and slash es just going to the landing page. If I make it slash uh, en, I still have the Spanish version. Why is it so? Because uh, we have hard coded our language into application controller. Uh, so let's uh, make it dynamic. We'll have set locale, I think n locale equals params locale or I think n dot default locale. So we're going to find the locale from the params from here or from the uh, query params like question mark locale equals es. Uh, or we're going to use the default language that is English by default. So uh, let's refresh, uh, go to the landing page. We have slash es, let's make it slash en. And you see, voila, we managed to translate the application by updating our URL params. Let's go again to slash es. And we see the version of the application in Spanish. Looks good. Let's add a language picker here so that the user can uh, select the language without uh, updating the URL. Um, let's go to our navbar, and here I will have uh, equals link to uh, en uh, root path locale equals en, and same with Spanish es and es. Okay, here are two links, so I click on this one. I see the application in English, I navigate anywhere and I still have it in the URL params. Let's go back here 
and I click here, I have the application in Spanish. Let's uh, also highlight the link to the current language. So to do this, I will go and add a clause. Clause, so will be uh, if locale, oh, if uh, en equals itn locale, uh, then we'll have a border bottom. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have no classes. So if the locale is en, then we have it highlighted. And let's do something similar for this other Spanish locale. Yeah, and here it should be es. So let's click on es. And everywhere we visit inside our application, we see that the Spanish language is selected. Now, this code looks not very nice. Let's, uh, what if we have like 10 languages? We don't want to hard code this for each language. So we're going to uh, do an enumeration and we're going to enumerate by the available locales. So let's go to application.rb. And actually, it is nice to set config.itn.default locale equals en and we will also set uh, uh yeah it is not 18 but itn n will also set available locales to be english and spanish now after this change i need to restart the server and let's have a look at our available locales now so previously we had a list of all those languages when running itn n available locales and now we should have only english and spanish looks good so let's go back to our navbar and here i will have item n available locales each do locale and and instead of these links i will have the locale uh, root path to locale equals locale and if locale so this way we don't have to type it for each language let's see if it works refreshing and yeah it works just as before now instead of the language names we can also display the flags this would be more beautiful so to do this we can go to our application helper and add a helper something like def locale to flag locale let's say locales equals uh, uh, en and uh, we will have the yeah us flag and uh, ES, let's have the Spanish flag, and let's have locales, locale to sim. So this way we're going to find uh, the flag based uh, on the uh, sim EN or ES. And let's display it here in the navbar. So we'll have locale to flag and locale. And voila, we, we pass the flags, looks good. Now let's go to our playlist, for example. I will change the locale and it redirects me to the root path. So this is not really nice. To redirect back to the previous page, instead of root path, I will say URL4. And it's going to be the URL to the current page. So now I'm on playlists. I change the language to English and it works. I change to Spanish and you see I'm still on the same page, but I changed the URL params from EN to ES. So yeah, it works. And uh, again, here I'm on the playlist page. I don't have the title and subtitle in Spanish, but if I go to playlist index, I see I already have the key for title and subtitle. So going to es.yml, I can say playlists um, index. Yeah, something like this. Let's just go with the flow. I refresh. And here I have the translations in Spanish or some kind of things that resemble the translations. So you see, I have the playlist in English and in Spanish. And that's basically it. This is how you can uh, set translations in uh, your uh, roots. So inside the roots, and the cool thing is that if you share the URL, the person will see, to whom you share will see the application is in the same language as you shared the URL. So it kind of makes sense. Now again, uh, to use this approach effectively, you would want to uh, namespace all the translatable parts of your application under this uh, scope. But uh, this is the only thing you do. You just namespace everything inside the scope and uh, everything will just work.
So yeah, this is how you can do translations uh, based on uh, setting the locale from URL params. So thanks for being with me and see you in the next one.